Yes you heard that right China has relocated one million rabbits to a desert but why? Well they want to change the landscape. In a world grappling with relentless environmental crisis few challenges are as urgent as desertification. The Dalabana Desert Reclamation Project has not only transformed once desolate landscapes but also sparked a global movement toward ecological restoration. It goes to show what human ingenuity and determination can achieve inspiring similar efforts across the world in the fight to reclaim lost ecosystems. Today we're diving deep into the story of how Dalad Banner became a game share. Let's get started. Dalad Banner's Environmental Revolution Desertification the process by which fertile land turns into barren desert is one of the most pressing environmental crises the world faces today, according to the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification or UNCCCD. Roughly 12 million hectares of land are lost every year to desertification affecting millions of people and threatening food security biodiversity and water resources. This global environmental challenge has prompted many nations to pursue desert reclamation efforts, though traditional methods like tree planting often prove to be insufficient and unsustainable. In the search for more integrated and lasting solutions, one project stands out as a game share the Dalad Banner Desert Reclamation Initiative. This innovative endeavor not only transformed vast swathes of the Gobi Desert into green fertile land, but also laid the foundation for a new holistic approach to ecological restoration. This project is more than just a small plantation effort, it's big huge in fact we're talking about reforestation, green energy and landscape transformation. Desertification is rapidly advancing particularly in regions like Africa, Asia and parts of North America. The problem is multifaceted human activities such as deforestation over grazing and improper agricultural practices exacerbate natural processes like droughts making it increasingly difficult to restore the land to its original state. In China alone desertification affects over 400 million people with about one quarter of the country's land area classified as desert or desertified land. The Gobi Desert, one of the largest deserts in the world, has been steadily expanding encroaching on agricultural areas and urban settlements. Traditional desert reclamation approaches such as planting trees to halt the spread of sanjins have been the cornerstone of many environmental efforts. While tree planting is undoubtedly beneficial in some contexts, it is often not enough to address the complex causes of desertification. These methods often fail to account for the interconnectedness of ecosystems where water retention soil fertility and local biodiversity are all crucial for long-term success. In many cases, the trees fail to thrive due to poor soil conditions, lack of water or unsuitable climate. Over time, the land returns to a desert state. What the world needs is a more holistic, sustainable approach, one that can restore vegetation and improve the overall ecosystem. This brings us to China's groundbreaking project in the Daled Banner region, located in the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region of northern China. This area, part of the larger Gobi Desert, was one of the most degraded and arid regions in China. Local farmers struggled with infertile soil, unreliable rainfall, and declining agricultural yields, which led to widespread poverty and migration. The land was slowly but surely turning into desert, and the situation was growing dire. In response, the Chinese integrated cutting-edge technologies with ancient ecological knowledge utilizing satellite data drones and remote sensing to monitor land conditions. They introduced a multi-pronged strategy that included soil restoration water conservation and the introduction of native plant species. Rather than simply planting trees, the idea was to regenerate the soil's natural fertility and stabilize the groundwater system. One of the key innovations in this area was the use of bio-mulching. This process involves spreading organic matter over the land to protect the soil from wind erosion, retain moisture, and create a fertile environment for plants. The Chinese also employed a method called windbreak planting using rows of plants to reduce the impact of wind and sand thereby preventing further erosion and desertification. By 2010, the project had begun to show remarkable results over 15,000 hectares of land, had been successfully restored with native plants beginning to flourish where once there had been only sand and dust. The success of the Dalad Banner Project attracted attention from both government agencies and environmental organizations. In 2014, the project expanded further and this initial work became an international case study for sustainable desert reclamation. The Dalad Banner Initiative has had a profound impact on global desert reclamation efforts. Countries in Africa, the Middle East and Central Asia facing similar issues with desertification began to take notice. This integrated approach provided a scalable solution and many nations reached out for collaboration, sharing knowledge and resources. 
One of the most notable international projects influenced by Dale Banner's success is the African Union's Great Green Wall Initiative launched in 2007. This ambitious project aims to combat desertification and land degradation by creating a mosaic of green spaces across the SHL region of Africa. Drawing inspiration from the Dale Banner project, the Great Green Wall aims to restore 100 million hectares of land by 2030. As desertification continues to threaten ecosystems and communities around the world, the Dalad Banner Project offers a glimmer of hope, demonstrating that with the right combination of science technology and ecological understanding, we can restore our planet's deserts to their former vitality. But why did the Chinese have to take such a rash action? And what's the deal with releasing rabbits in the desert? Well, let's start from the very beginning. The desertification crisis in China. By the 1980s, northern China was grappling with an environmental crisis of unprecedented scale in the form of desertification. What was once fertile arable land had become an expansive barren desert with sand dunes advancing at an alarming rate. Stretching across regions such as Inner Mongolia, Ninjia, and Gansu, the encroaching desert had already swallowed vast areas of farmland, threatening the livelihoods of millions and jeopardizing food security for the entire nation. According to the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification or UNCCCD desertification, affected around one quarter of China's landmass during this period. The most severely impacted areas were located in the northern and western regions of the country, particularly in the Gobi Desert, one of the largest deserts in the world, and in the Luz Plateau. These regions, already semi-arid to arid, were slowly turning into vast swathes of sand, and thus a combination of human activity and natural factors caused this drastic change. Deforestation over grazing by livestock and unsustainable farming practices were the primary contributors to soil erosion. The delicate top soil stripped of vegetation became highly susceptible to wind erosion, resulting in the spread of sand dunes. Meanwhile, the harsh climatic conditions in northern China, including long periods of drought and low annual rainfall, further aggravated the situation. In addition, as the desert spread rivers and lakes began to dry up, compounding the problem and making it harder for people to maintain agricultural practices. The environmental impact was striking. Barren land replaced once fertile agricultural fields, while the advancing dunes buried farmland villages and infrastructure. Not only was the land itself becoming unproductive, but local biodiversity was rapidly declining. Native vegetation struggled to survive, and the loss of forests and plant life had cascading effects on local ecosystems, leading to further soil degradation. Water sources became scarce, exacerbating the challenges for local farmers who depended on irrigation for their crops. The ecological consequences were not confined to the local area. By the mid-1980s, the rapid spread of desertification had reached beyond the affected regions, contributing to worsening dust storms and environmental pollution. Cities like Beijing, located far from the deserts, were plagued by seasonal dust storms that originated from the expanding Gobi Desert. In 1983, a particularly severe dust storm resulted in thick clouds of sand and dust reaching as far as Japan and Korea. Faced with such an extensive crisis, the Chinese government began implementing various traditional reforestation efforts in a bid to combat desertification. These included large-scale tree planting campaigns aimed at greening the affected areas, halting the spread of sand dunes, and revitalizing the soil. The idea behind these initiatives was that trees particularly drought-resistant species would anchor the soil, reduce wind erosion, and increase moisture retention, ultimately transforming the barren land into more productive ecosystems. However, the limitations of these traditional methods quickly became apparent. Despite the scale of tree planting campaigns, many of the efforts failed to achieve their intended results. One of the key challenges was the harshness of the arid climate. The Gobi Desert, for example, receives an average annual rainfall of only about 194 mm, making it one of the driest regions in China. Even drought-resistant tree species struggled to establish themselves in such water-scarce conditions. Moreover, the soil conditions in desertified areas were poor and lacked the nutrients required for sustained plant growth. The land had become so degraded that it was incapable of supporting the growth of even hardy plant species. Furthermore, the lack of an integrated approach to soil restoration and vegetation management meant that tree planting alone could not address the underlying causes of desertification such as overgrazing and unsustainable agricultural practices. In addition to the environmental challenges, the scale and logistics of large-scale reforestation efforts proved to be unsustainable. The Chinese government's ambitious projects often relied on massive state-f-funded tree planting campaigns, which while well-intentioned were not always executed with the necessary expertise. In some cases, the choice of tree species was not suitable for the specific environmental conditions. 
For example, the introduction of non-native species disrupted the balance of the ecosystem, making the land even more vulnerable to desertification in the long run. One of the most ambitious projects the Green Great Wall launched in the early 1980s aimed to plant millions of trees along the northern borders of China stretching from the eastern coast to the western desert regions. While the project was seen as an attempt to create a protective barrier against the encroaching desert its effectiveness remained limited. High rates of tree mortality coupled with a lack of attention to broader ecological factors like soil fertility water management and community involvement led to only partial success. In response to the growing recognition of the limitations of traditional methods, Chinese environmental scientists and policymakers began to explore new ways to combat desertification. A more integrated approach that included soil regeneration, sustainable water use, and the restoration of natural vegetation became the focus of research and development in the 1990s and beyond. Projects like the Dalad Banner Desert Reclamation Effort shared by our channel The Science Signal.